This is Brent with Emotiva, and today in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure the speaker preset, layout, and crossover points in your Basics processor to give you the best possible experience right out of the box with a quick and easy setup. So here, from factory settings, we are going to set up and configure your speaker layout in your Emotiva Basics processor. And here, we're doing this in an MC1 processor. First, and again, this is from factory settings, I need to go to setup, and we're gonna to go to speaker setup in the menu. By default, uh, the speaker layout is set to 714, uh, but of course, if we select speaker layout, we'll see uh, other various options in here. And uh, it's really important that we match whatever our, our physical layout is in our room to whatever we, we select here in the layout. But often before we get to speaker layout, in particular, if you're running more than one sub or uh, you're not running a center channel, it's important that we select, you know, if, I, if I'm really running two subs, I wanna change that to two, and and we'll notice that that actually changes what's available here in our speaker layout. Instead of 714 for one sub, now it says 724. And, and in addition, you know, if I'm not running a center, or running a phantom center, I can set that to off, and we'll see that now our selections change from seven to six because we remove that center. Up. But it, here we're going to set up with a center by default. Of course, that's on, and uh, we'll we'll leave it at two subwoofers. And then once I you know have my center and subwoofer selections made, then I'll have all the uh, available to match my, my layout. And we're going to set up, I'm going to call it a 5.2.4, uh, uh, and we'll kind of talk about, you know, all the different things surrounding uh, the height speakers and your Atmos channels and those different connection options there, kind of where to connect on the processor as well. You'll see the fourth option here. If you're running a uh, ceiling or height or Atmos speakers, you have uh, two options here for height type. Our two options for height type are either ceiling or reflective. And of course, reflective, as you may know, that references Atmos speakers like our Airmotive A1 speakers that are meant to sit on top of or be an integrated module on something like a tower speaker to shoot up at the ceiling and bounce sound back down at you for Atmos and DTSX effects. Of course, ceiling, this references a true in-ceiling speaker, but this also refers to a direct firing Atmos speaker like our A1 speaker speaker when they are mounted up at the top front or top rear corners of your room to directly fire at you. Uh, and in this case, we're going to use ceiling speakers uh, or direct firing speakers, non-reflective type. So, you know, I hopefully have matched my speaker layout to uh, what is physically connected to my processor. However, before moving on, I'm going to go to the level test slash adjust menu. And here I can open this menu and I can select each of my channels in my 5.2.4 setup. And as I select each of these, you'll hear a pink noise test tone for each speaker to play out of, of each channel. Now, it's important that when I select my left channel that I'm actually getting that test tone out of my left front speaker. If it's playing out of a different speaker, then that likely means that I've uh, mixed up my connections between the processor and the amplifier or the speaker connection on the back of the amplifier or so forth and need to revisit those connections. But it's also important that we don't see any speakers listed here that are not actually connected to the processor. If we tell uh, the speaker layout that we have all of these, uh, you know, Atmos channels connected, all these heights connected or a second subwoofer, but we don't actually have them connected, um, it's going to try to send audio information to those channels and we will lose out on some of that audio information that would otherwise be folded into uh, the channels that we do have connected. So it's important we don't see any extra channels here, um, but it's also important that uh, you know when we select each speaker, we actually get a test tone out of that channel. If I selected, say, my right surround, and I didn't actually get a test tone out of my right surround, then I would be suspect uh, that you know one of my connections is maybe in the incorrect spot. And we'll, we'll kind of talk about at the end of the video, uh, show you, you know, which connections to use if you're using you know, two versus four Atmos speakers or a five channel versus a seven channel. Channel, uh, bed surround. Um, but as long as all of my speaker test tones line up with what is actually connected to my processor, when I select right top front, it's actually playing out of the right top front uh, height channel, um, then I should be all good to go there. 
After we've gone through all of our channels in the level test adjustment to ensure that our speakers are connected appropriately, uh, a couple of other things you may want to do in your basic speaker configuration are uh, set your distances and your crossover points for your different speakers. So we'll, we'll go ahead and look at distances first. Uh, of course, distance is pretty self-explanatory. You just want to manually input how far away each speaker is from the main listening position. And you can just sit in your main listening position and uh, have someone help you run a tape measure out to each of your channels. And I usually say, you know, point it at the tweeter or the mid range for your measurement because, you know, that just gives you a good spot to, uh, to, to look for. And of course, you know, if I want to set any of these distances, um, by default, uh, we're, we're setting in inches here. And of course, uh, you know, if you, if you keep scrolling up, it'll kind of jump up to feet. You know, you can put it in foot or inches. Uh, if you go into the options portion of the setup menu, you can change the units uh, to metric if you like. Um, but, but here we're just manually entering in the distances for all of our speakers. And again, Again, you know, we shouldn't see any channels listed here that are not actually, uh, you know, connected to the processor. We should have already verified that by uh, doing our level test adjust that we did previously. So another thing that you may need to set up in your speaker configuration is your crossover points. And if I open the crossover selection of the menu, you can see that the left right channels are tied together, uh, your, your surrounds and, and all of your, your tops, which, you know, is another way to say the height speakers, they're all kind of tied together. And, and so you, you do have some adjustability for each kind of grouping of channels. And by default, all of these are set to 80 hertz. That's just the default. Of course, you know, a rule of thumb, I often recommend for your crossover, at least a starting point, to look at the uh, frequency response measurements for your speaker. Say that the speaker plays down to 50 hertz in its specifications. I usually recommend, uh, you know, overlapping by, by 10 or 20 hertz into that low frequency uh, response uh, measurement for your speaker uh, from the spec. So if it's, if it's playing down to 50, I'll do 60 or 70 hertz just to make sure I'm 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 kind of eating into that natural roll off of the speaker a little bit. And then of course, you know, if my center isn't capable of, you know, maybe it goes down to 80, then I'd go up to 90 or 100 and so forth. But it's kind of up to you to set those points. Um, but a couple of things to recognize is in the, the basics unit, there is not a small or large designation. Basically, uh, you know, we still can designate it, but we're just not calling it small or large. If I set any crossover value here, this is gonna basically act as a small speaker, right? So if I set my left right as 60 hertz as a crossover, anything under 60 hertz is gonna start getting sent to my subwoofers. Now, if I want, to effectively set that speaker as large, I want to lower the crossover point. Uh, the lowest you can go is 35 hertz. Once you get past that, uh, we end up with this, this uh, bypass here. That is effectively the same thing as setting that speaker to large. We're bypassing the crossover. We're sending a full range signal to our, our front left and right. And you know, I could do the same thing on my center if I wanted to. Um, but, but again, it's up to you to kind of designate, decide how you want to, uh, to set up these uh, different speakers and your crossover points. Um, but of course, uh, bypass is how you effectively set those to large here. We do have a, a couple other options here like the subsonic filter. You know, if you had a, an issue where you didn't want the subwoofer plug playing, uh, you know, below 20 hertz, you know, for, for uh, room response reasons or, or otherwise, you can kind of set it so that we're cutting off and not playing anything below 20. And of course we go up from there. Or if I just want to get all that bass and naturally kind of have it uh, roll off where it's going to roll off from the sub, I'll, I like to set the subsonic filter to off and just let the sub do its thing. But we can set it at 20 to, to kind of not capture some of that lower low bass. And then uh, another interesting feature here is our, our subwoofer low pass setting. And what you'll find is that, you know, this is saying uh, where to start sending information to the subwoofer. Of course, it's, it's kind of taking that from your crossover points you're setting uh, for your other speaker channels. But notice, um, we cannot set this any lower than the, the highest crossover point of any of our main bed surround channels. And so what I mean by that is, uh, you know, I can set my, my top crossover to, to anything, you know, typically I'd want for my heights to go somewhere like, you know, 200. Um, but with my surrounds, if I say raise this up to 100 hertz, Notice that is as as low as I can set my subwoofer low pass filter because it's going to say, you know, with any of your main bed surround, be it your fronts, your center, any of your surround channels, we don't want there to be a gap in the base information. And so if I, I lowered that to say 80 hertz, I'd be missing information from my surrounds between the 180 hertz. In, in general, I suggest just leaving the subwoofer low pass at whatever that, that crossover point is, that kind of highest crossover point from any of your bed surrounds. But of course, your, your tops don't 
really come into play with the low pass it's simply because there's not really a lot of low base information there so you know I don't necessarily care if there's a gap between you know 200 and 100 Hertz uh, of course I could just go ahead and, and raise this up to enca encapsulate all of my speakers so it's getting uh, you know all the information uh, any low base information from our height channels as well and so that's kind of the rundown on, on the crossovers one other thing I, I want to note is that uh, you know if you set your front left and right to bypass effectively setting them as large this opens up a couple of other options in our, uh, our speaker uh, preset menu and so if I go to my subwoofers before when we had our, our front set to small or had a crossover setting there didn't have them set to bypass I only had options for one or two subwoofers if I set the front only it's only the front left and right to bypass then I can select no subwoofers and that gives me you know options for five zero four you know if you're not running a sub we have to give all of that low base somewhere to go uh, and so by designating the front speakers as large they kind of act as that that subwoofer catch all for the low base from the other channels uh, and so you have to set those to bypass or set the fronts to large in order to turn your subwoofer off completely another feature that is activated if we set those fronts to bypass or set them to large is we have this base enhance feature and effectively this is useful in cases where you are using uh, playing a stereo signal for example which is a 2.0 signal without a, a 0.1 to represent the the LFE or the the bass track well in that case if we set those front speakers to large they're gonna play all of the 2.0 and nothing is gonna get sent to the subwoofer if we want the subwoofer to play along with those front speakers we can set bass enhance to on and that is only available when the fronts are set to large because that is a case where the fronts may play all of a 2.0 signal and then the subwoofer gets left out if you're listening to music you're sending 2.0 signals and you want that sub to play along with your full range uh, front speakers then we can set the uh, enhanced bass feature on and so from there, uh, there's not a whole lot else to talk about in our, our speaker setup. Of course, I didn't cover every single uh, you know, item in here, but if you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, from here, I'd like to look at the physical connections that you might use on the back of the processor, depending on uh, what channels uh, you have in your speaker layout and configuration. Here, we can see the back panel of a Basics MC1 processor. And I wanna talk about, for your different speaker configurations and layout that you've chosen, which actual physical output connections to use along this bottom row of our analog pre-outs. Uh, first, we can just talk about the subwoofers. If you're only using one sub, uh, just use uh, the subwoofer one uh, output to connect to your sub. If using two, obviously you would use both one and two together, but one is, is the, the prioritized output for your subwoofer. Now, when we're talking about our, our bed surround channels, and by that I mean our, our center, our surrounds, anything that's not a, a height or an Atmos channel, um, we'll really work our way out from the center output, and then as we continue to add more speakers to our bed channels, we'll, we'll kind of work our way out from there with no gaps in between. And so what I mean is that if you had, say, a bed layer of five surround channels, say you're doing a 5.1, our five speakers would be comprised of the center, the right front, and left front, and then your left surround and your right surround. A common point of confusion here, and specifically why I'm talking about 5.1, is that even if your uh, surround speakers are physically behind you in your room, which is a perfectly fine way to place your fourth and fifth channels in a 5.1 setup, that does not mean that we use the back surround outputs on the processor. The RBS, LBS, those are your left, back, and right back surrounds, those would only be used in a seven channel bed surround layout as the sixth and seventh channel. The way that the encoding of surround sound formats prioritizes the channels first includes the front three, then what we call our surrounds, and then the sixth and seventh as our, our rear or back surrounds. And so if you're just using uh, 5.1, you'll use all five of these jacks that are right next to each other without any gaps between them, adding on your sixth and seventh to the LBS and the RBS if you're running seven bed channels. Now, if you're running widths and a 9.1.4 or 9.2.4 or just a 9.1 setup, then our width channels, the eighth and ninth bed surround speakers, will be uh, connected to these uh, that are labeled RW 
and LW for right width and left width. Of course, those are assignable as either widths or uh, some height or Atmos channels, and, and we'll kind of talk about that next, but those would be your eighth and ninth bed surround channels. So uh, let's move on and talk about our height channels or our Atmos channels. If you only have two height channels, and that goes for either reflective or ceiling type height speakers, the way that that information is prioritized um, in the decoding is that those will be assigned as middle height speakers. And middle height, uh, even if they are installed in the front or, or the rear uh, in some case, uh, it's really just a designation meant to, that it's gonna capture all of that height or Atmos information in those two speakers. That's gonna be the bucket that all of that information gets dumped into. Well, in that case, if you only have two height speakers, you will use the LMH and RMH for right, middle, and left, middle height uh, outputs on the back of the process. Um, in this unit, you cannot assign the other height outputs uh, to be active if only using two height channels. In our uh, X series, the XMC2, and our reference RMC level processors, you have a little bit more assignability there. Um, but moving on, uh, if you have four height or at most speakers instead of two, then you would move to using the rear and front outputs on the processor. Um, you know, obviously rear for your two rear heights and, and then the front for your, your two front heights. And that goes for whether you have four reflective or four ceiling Atmos speakers. Um, so if only two, use the middle height connections. If you have four, use the front and the rear height connections. Obviously, if you have six Atmos channels, you would use all three of these options on each side for your heights and you would not be able to use any width channels. Um, uh, uh, one configuration that kind of gets a little bit left out of these basics units would be a 9.1 or 2.2 setup, meaning that you have only two height channels and nine bed surround channels so that you're wanting to use widths. In that case, because you're only using two height channels, those must be connected to the middle height outputs which are also uh, you know, assignable as your widths. And so you are not able to use widths and only two height speakers at the same time. So you will not see a 9.1.2 layout listed in the speaker layout of the processor. Um, but those are kind of the uh, priorities of all the outputs that you should use based on the speaker layout you've chosen in your room and set up in the processor menu. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope this video was helpful in configuring your speaker preset and layout with your Basics processor. From everyone here at Emotiva, happy listening.